Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, <laughs> take that big week break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux open source. I'm Vin, and that's Jill, and that's you watching us live after the fact. Maybe they're listening to us, Jill. Wouldn't it be odd yeah. if you were just watching the show, weren't listening, didn't have closed captioning on or anything like that? You're like, hmm. Yeah. I, that'd be weird. You walk into a room, you see somebody, they're watching TV, get sound off. Yeah, that would be... That would be strange. <laughs> would you ask them what they were doing? Yes, I absolutely. Wouldn't. I would walk out of the room backwards very slowly as not to disturb them. I'm like, hmm, you know what? I'm good. I'm good. You got a birthday coming up, though. Yeah, I do. This Sunday. So me and my husband in the afternoon and late into the evening, we'll be enjoying most of the day at Disneyland. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna get covered in buttons yes i will be wearing my birthday button <laughs> it doesn't work for steve though i mean you can you can have some fun with steve and get him to wear the button put the button on you you're like what else yeah <laughs> we did we put the button of shame on steve last month for his birthday and he got sung to on uh the ride star tours that was pretty cool <laughs> So Hopefully I will probably get some too. Him. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I want to thank Jordan for filling in for me last week when I was sick. Thank you so much, Jordan. That that worked out really nicely that he could uh you could you could do LWW on Thursday <laughs> with Jordan. <laughs> that was one of the things if you don't know Jordan, uh, go back and watch that. Jordan's the one who named the show because we were just yeah. having a yeah, absolutely. Created a meeting one night, and this is what we came up with. And we did joke at the time all those years ago, like, and we'll do it on Thursdays. So we had an opportunity to do one on Thursdays. Yeah. There we are. I got a couple of updates to tell everyone about. Uh, if you, okay. We have uh, switched over to doing video on Spotify. So if you follow us on Spotify, you can now watch us, but we had to update the feed for that. That's been in the works for a while. All that got pushed out. Same for Linux Gamecast Weekly. If that's your jam, I'm just letting everybody know because that flipped over at the end of, mm -hmm. end of last week and the emails have been coming in <laughs> one at a time, one at a time. And I'm like, Hey, I need to announce that how everything's working. But outside of that, we've been racing around in circles. We're doing the track mania thing, which is not mm -hmm. rocket league. We've been over that multiple times. It's a physics platformer that happens to have wheels yeah. runs on a calculator. It's really cheap and it's a good excuse for Linux. Loving miscreants to get together on Tuesdays and Fridays. Speaking of Fridays, Jill, who are you going to beat this week? Uh, I did beat you once yesterday. I thought you beat me twice. You almost beat oh, me twice. Twice, okay. I got lucky because we were doing that Quidditch. <laughs> Here's what, yeah, so it's a racing game. No, that Quidditch map we were playing at the end. And I got lucky right at the end of that. And uh, Yeah, <laughs> that was a good one. That's going to be fun. That's going to be fun. We got, we got some wild and wacky maps coming in, but I saw something <laughs> that I had to put in the show this week. Oh. I had to put in the show because I, I, you ever just write something off? You're like, oh, well, that was a good experiment. We'll never hear from it again. It would It's a shame. Maybe it would have been interesting <laughs> yes. if it had evolved into a different product and uh, rise from your grave as uh, Altered Beast, <laughs> let's say. <laughs> and that thing that uh, Ven is speaking of is Unity 7.6. Yes, Unity 7.6 has been released for testing and is back in active development. And yeah, yes, that's the controversial desktop manager created by Canonical that had replaced GNOME 2 and Ubuntu 11 years ago. If you can believe that. <laughs> It's 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 awesome. I don't want to believe that. That that's, that that was like two years ago, Jill. What are you talking about? No, <laughs> I was just amazed on how long ago it was. You know, oh my gosh, eleven years ago. <laughs> you know, because we, me and you, Van, have been using uh, Linux way before that. But I still can't believe it was that long ago. <laughs> that uh, oh come on, know, Jill. There's nothing Unity. more satisfying than having somebody come up to you and like, well, huh? I've been using Linux for nine years and you're like oh you're new yeah yes <laughs> exactly me and you've been using it since 1993 <laughs> decades <which> yes <laughs> that doesn't so, do anything because i will tell you i know nothing about linux if you ask me 
<laughs> yes. So uh, with Unity, you you know, a lot of people either loved it or hated it. Personally, you know, I liked Unity, especially in the last few versions when it became faster and more responsive. Um, and there are several reasons why. One is the HUD and Dash search were actually very progressive and honestly reinvented the way we use traditional menus. Love that or hate that. You know, it's actually, you know, brought a lot to the Linux ecosystem. And elements of Unity are actually in use today in more in many modern desktops like the newer GNOME. So it goes to show you, you know, that's the, the, the beauty of Linux and being able to create your own desktop managers and your own apps. They, uh, the, they, they help each other grow and put new innovation and ideas into other elements of the desktop. I've always said that about Canonical. A lot of people get on, yes. get on Canonical and still do to this day. But one thing Canonical has done, they don't do it so much these days, but back in the day, they were doing these moonshot things. And by that, I mean trying stuff that probably wasn't going to work. Yeah. But, you know, the R&D, maybe something else will come out of that project. You know, things like the Ubuntu phone, Unity, mm-hmm. uh, Mirror. Synergy. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe something good's come out of this. I don't know. I out of yeah. curiosity, we were talking about this in the pre-show. If you're a patron, go back and listen to that on the Uncut series. But did I want to ask anyone in chat right now? Did Unity ever run on anything that wasn't Debian related, like out of the box? Did it ship with any other distros? Because I couldn't find one. I couldn't think yeah. of one. I should say I didn't do any extensive searching, but. You know, I, that's what I wanted to see. Like, did any other distribution have Unity out of the box? I remember way back in the day, before it was officially released, I downloaded, compiled it. And it was kind of in a rough state because my initial impression of Unity before it was rolled out and I was like, that's it? Huh. But uh, this one's got, like, better resource management too, though, right? Oh, yeah, Absolutely. Um, and I actually noticed I've been playing with Ubuntu Unity 22.04 since it was released last week. And I've noticed how, how much more memory efficient and the desktop feels uh, much quicker. And so this version of Unity 6.7 is supposed to be even lower in um, RAM usage um, and reduced substantially uh, to about uh, 700 to 800 megabytes or less which is really good actually it's supposed to be lower than 708 to 800 so that's substantial because that was one of the big problems with unity on launch it was a memory hog <laughs> oh man and that remember when ram like having eight gigs was like i'm good oh it's taking up a lot of ram these days, yeah. you don't even think of things, unless you have to buy DDR5. Geez, that stuff is crazy expensive still. But out of curiosity, out of curiosity, due diligence, this morning when I came into the studio, I cloned the Git repository, got everything together, ran build up on it. It only needed about one, two, 15 things that's not available on Debian 11. So that's kind mm-hmm. of where my experiment ended. Now, okay. it would be interesting to see this packaged for other distributions, something outside of the Ubuntu sphere, wider yeah, adoption. Because you got to imagine people running pop are going to run whatever pop has. And if you're running Ubuntu default, more than likely you're running GNOME 4, right? Yeah. Um, I just, you know, more desktops, more better. That's the way I feel about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> yeah. And it looks like there's a visual, um, GUI re, re, revamp for it too. It's it's much more, I'd say, much more modern looking um, with the the HUD and the dash, and also the docs and menus. Um, more modern and sleek, and kind of flatter looking. Yeah. So they went that route. Yeah, <laughs> it's a bit shouty for my taste, but it's nice and purple. Lots of purple theming. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> there it is. Go play with it. I just wanted it just caught me off guard because you see those yeah. headlines roll by and you're like, Unity because when you think Unity, what do you think game engine these days, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm like, <laughs> there's a new version of Unity. And I'm like, oh, that's not wait, what? That that Unity? And there it is. 
So, and there's got to be some diehards. Clearly, there's some diehards, dedicated fans of the technology and the desktop that are still playing around with it. And I know for a lot of you out there, that was probably the first thing, your first desktop manager with Linux, you know, mm-hmm. out of the box. Absolutely, so, yeah. Could have been something you missed. Firefox yeah. 100, Joe. Wow. Firefox turns 100, 100 versions of Firefox. I never thought I'd live to see that day. Definitely. Well, I think they've <laughs> kind of played a little fast and loose with the numbering recently. Yeah, they, they absolutely they have. So yeah, the first three digit version of Mozilla's Firefox web browser has been released and it now supports captions and subtitles uh, display on YouTube, Prime Video and Netflix on videos when you watch them in picture in picture, which is really cool. All you have to do is turn on the subtitles on the in-page video player and they will ap- appear in picture in picture video. So that's pretty cool. And this Firefox spell checking now checks spelling in multiple languages. That is wonderful to know for my favorite open source web browser. Uh, the more support for languages, the better, especially because of the worldwide use of Linux. <laughs> this is great. And a lot of distros come pre-installed with Firefox. And also HDR video is now supported in Firefox on Mac watching YouTube videos. Yes, that's for Mac, but I am sure this feature will be here soon for us Linux users. <laughs> I don't know. I'm looking at the preferred color schemes and I'm like, what are these other three Firefox theme, <laughs> system theme, like why Light, are those? Dark. Yeah, what are those three in there for? Huh? I mean, it should just default to dark. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should just. <laughs> it gives you choice, Ben. <laughs> I don't understand these three other confusing choices, Joe. Oh no, that, I think that's great. And Firefox has always made it really easy to change the backgrounds on websites and the colors, <laughs> and with uh, extensions, and and now it's just built in, and also. Scroll bars on Linux and, yes, also Windows 11 won't take space by default in the browser. But if you still want to see a visual cue of your of your scroll bars on Linux, you can just uh, change the settings and to turn back the back on the scroll bars. So no problem there. I, I personally like the uh, kind of modern look without them showing up. They're just over there on the right-hand side when you click. <laughs> That's cool. That's a pretty neat feature. Now, like <laughs> the uh, YouTube uh, video player. So mm-hmm. how does it, the subtitles are going to work when you click the closed captioning now? Yeah. All right. I think that's pretty neat because I, no, you just can't, <laughs> when, when I think about closed captioning, like we do live closed captioning right now and it's better than YouTube's closed captioning after the fact five years ago but five mm. years ago youtube closed captioning was hilarious to read it was yeah a, like, i remember that then <laughs> raw comedy like you know i'm definitely <laughs> going to power update the dolphin like what i, I was talking about kernels and that's kind of gone that's a good feature to have that's a good feature to have mm-hmm. and if you're watching this with firefox on twitch we got mm-hmm. closed captionings coming out live right now and they're 95% accurate. Not too bad. Not too bad. But here's something I want to tell everyone because right into this with Chrome recently, and they even put this in the notes, some websites might not work correctly in Firefox due to the version mm. 100. Um, that new three-digit <laughs> number. Oh, boy. That's Is right. it like a new millennium? <laughs> 2001? The internet never <laughs> planned on triple-digit browser versions. Yeah. <laughs> you can look into the root cause of that, but I just thought I'd throw that out there. If you run into some sites, you're like, ah, what's not where that's what the problem is. And um, this is something I thought was kind of neat. New users can set Firefox as the default PDF handler. Yeah, which is neat very nice. Because yeah. I never think about that directly. Normally when I hit a PDF, I just it's just whatever browser I happen to be in, because having a what do you think in 2022 is your PDF reader is usually a browser, right? And you don't have mm-hmm. a separate one. You might. I know I personally don't, um, but that's good that you can set yeah. it as the default because Chrome's going to try to do that. <laughs> yes, true, true. And I've been using Firefox for my default PDF viewer for many years, so this is just makes sense. It's just handy to have. 
Yeah. And uh, I did test it, downloaded the binary, worked out of the box on Debian mm-hmm. 11. And uh, if you want a, is it available as a snap yet? I don't know. I don't, that I don't know. But I just downloaded it from Mozilla's website on on Pop and Ubuntu. You can't. Do, that's too complex, Jill, to uncompress that, the that's how, nope, I, and drop I, it in a folder. Nope, too crazy. You know what? I've been doing that for years since you've been using Debian in the early years of Linux, and I just still do it. Nope, too complex. There's yeah. too many steps involved in that. I need you to install this. <laughs> It'll yes. probably get updated in your repos. <laughs> it is kind of brilliant. Um, what else do we have? Oh, right. Katie and oh, Live. yeah. Nonlinear Katie video Live. editing. That's something I've used Katie and Live over the years of doing these shows and a lot of the guides and how-to videos that I've been doing over the past decade. I've used a multitude of things, sometimes just regular FFmpeg. But I think the first time I really got into using a GUI was Katie and Live. And this is... Mm. Like really getting into it, and of course I played with Katie and Live like back in two thousand and three. Yeah, which, <laughs> but I'm thinking like recently, probably I don't know, two thousand eleven, two thousand twelve. I started using it for a couple of things and and got the job done. Until I had that one situation to where it lost a project that had been working on for hours and hours and hours and like i'm done then i went to open shot played with open shot went back to kde and here we are in 2022 where i'm using davinci resolve but always keeping an eye out on kde and live yeah. and it's got a bunch of new features jill's going to tell you about and i'm going to give you my little mini review in just yeah a second. <laughs> lots of huge features uh so one of my favorite ones is it introduces new effect templates so users can create and configure and share custom effects with each other via the KDE store and that download them into the app directly. And this will help not only um, can you, this will help new users. So not only can you create more advanced ready made effects for less skilled users, but this is actually huge progress to making more industry standard features available in Caden Live that are offered in the likes of DaVinci and Adobe Premiere, et cetera, et cetera. And as I actually usually do, I downloaded and played with the Caden Live app image. And uh, I, I love that they have an app image. This is just great for every, every new version of Caden Live. That's how we test them here on, at LGC. And what I really was happy with with is the render dialog looks so much nicer and there's an easier access to all the advanced video and audio settings. And actually it looks more like older versions of the Caden Live render dialog, which I liked before they updated it in the last few versions. So I'm happy they went back to showing more of the um, advanced codecs and features and the Big deal here is it includes a save your current preset as a custom preset button in the render dialog so you can use and load them as you need. And that's something I do all the time. I'm always changing the settings. I'm I'm often uh, using uh, lossless um, audio and video. And this is just a nice way to save my settings when I need them and pop those in. (laughs) It's really cool. Yeah, 100%. And like 10 bit color uh, doesn't currently work with the effects, but that's just something you want to keep in mind. A couple of other things. Uh, it now runs on the Apple M1 hardware. Woohoo. Me- awesome. I bet <laughs> nothing but raging envy for anyone who can just casually, like, I'll just buy one to play with and kind of put Linux on it. And uh, it's out of my price range right now. Um, automatically transcoding variable frame rate videos. So if. Um, you're importing that. It's just going to kind of give you a best use, you know, probably like 30 or 60, depending on whatever it's closer to. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, that rendering dialog UI went oh, complete rewrite. Uh, not <laughs> yes. completely, but custom profile creation. And uh, as is tradition, I did the thing I do. Like new version of KDM Live. Here I come picking up behind a tree. I'm like, oh, that's, yeah. <laughs> uh, grab that app image, put it on the box. In the studio, I do the video editing. It's the Red Rubber 1920X, 32 gigs of RAM running Debian 11. And uh, just kind of try to give it the business. So 
I took the uh, Steam segment from Linux Teamcast Weekly from last week. What I recorded, DNX HD 290, 1080p 60. There's some video mm-hmm. information for you. Audio, five channels, uncompressed, 32-bit, float, wave, PCM. I dropped it in there. And, uh, you know, it prompted me to change the timeline because I think the default timeline was something like 720p 30, something like that, out of the box without anything configured. Prompted me to change that to uh, 1080p 60. I was like, hey, would you like me to do that for you? Yes, I would. Good. Good experience <laughs> there. Um, then I took my clip and I drug it in the timeline. And if you look, it gives you a like a little blink animation in the bottom center of the program that tells you uh, there's not enough audio tracks for all streams. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> the thing is, that can confuse you. I knew yeah. to look for that, and I had to look for it. I'm like, I know there's some something because you know it just you know kind of runs back to the bin when you drop the video file. Like, that's not a good experience, but there is a warning. Kind of think maybe kind of follow like maybe what Olive does or DaVinci does. I don't know about OpenShot, but if I drag something in, it's just going to automatically add the extra audio because that I have mm-hmm. to right click and I have to click, 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 click yeah, and add. do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So <laughs> that happened. Uh, let's see. Add the audio tracks manually. Oh, I had to disable normalize audio on the thumbnails. I don't know that why that oh. was on by default curious uh, i'm sure somebody can tell me uh, but all right finally got the tracks added i drug that into the timeline or video and i looked at my desktop joe hmm. my you desktop find? came open uh not katie in live because it crashed oh i'm sorry <laughs> don't give oh. up never surrender no. <laughs> never give up I know, man. I'm not. I'm like, I want to play with this. And I uh, absolutely did. So, you know what? Uh, take two, a lot more successful. Uh, it took several minutes for the audio waveforms to render because I have five tracks of audio, like this show right now. I have my track, I have Jill's audio track. Then we're going to have like two tracks for stereo audio plus extra tracks with nothing on them, but just in case we need them. Uh, probably took like three and a half, four minutes to render out the waveform thumbnail, you know, in the timeline itself. But uh, yeah, scrubbing through the footage, you know, it's very lightly compressed DNX HD 290, five tracks audio, everything was playing. Rendering the footage, this is something I was also curious about. Uh, and so I used a uh, hardware accelerated NIST. That's it's, it's experimental, experimental, yeah, but it's the only <laughs> way I'm going to roll in 2022, yeah. <laughs> and so I did what I typically export with DaVinci Resolve, which is HEVC X265. and with hardware acceleration, I hit render and it crashed. Hmm. Now it didn't crash the desktop. It gave me an error message. So I'm thinking I could probably okay. track back and find out what's really going on. But yeah, uh, let's see. Awesome. Unsolicited feedback. Ding. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Not awesome that it crashed, but that you found a bug. Found and a bug. Uh, I'm going to yeah. uh, copy and paste. I'll provide that amount of feedback. What I can, I got to reproduce it a couple of more times just to make double sure, though, because then again, you know, it didn't crash the second time I launched it. Yeah. Uh, but I couldn't get it to render with that. And a uh, couple of things with like the export menu in KDN Live is, you know, what do I need for that? You know, I want quick access to like Kodak, frame rate, container, encoder, resolution, basically mm-hmm. the same thing for audio and preferably in a drop down menu, kind of like. Everything else, you know, I want to say, hey, I want this to be in a move container. I want it to be using MPEG Layer 4 or HEC yeah. 265. I want my audio to be PCM or IEEE float and just d- 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 resolution. I've never been a fan of the export dialog in KDM Live. But I've said that, you know, it's not a game stopper. I'm just saying compared to kind of everything else, it, yeah. it's the odd one. Like, da Vinci and Premiere and yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah there is that so um oh right and one last bit we were talking about this me and jill uh i i've tasted i've tasted the ability to drag and select stuff in the timeline mm-hmm. <laughs> not going back not going back <laughs> no that that is Bring, such a just yeah. productivity 
cutting up to 11, being able to grab things with the mouse and highlight and selecting and moving it around instead of like click, 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 mm-hmm. click, draw. Oh, I'd yeah. love to see that in Katie and Life. Pretty please. Pretty please. I don't know how difficult that would be. That might be impossible and whatever. I'm just like begging politely. And um, yeah, so I would say I could absolutely use Katie and Live 2204 in a pinch in the studio. Mm-hmm. And I know that doesn't sound like a glowing endorsement, but it absolutely is. I mean, it, it's serviceable. It's something that you can get the job done with. Yeah, and it's Linux. Absolutely. There's a ton of other open source options. There's closed source options. Just interesting times. Interesting times. I'm, I'm happy to see it. I'm happy that they got it out. And I'm looking forward to whatever they have coming up next. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> now, let's talk about everyone's favorite closed source expensive non-linear <laughs> actually it's extremely cheap yeah it's, it's very reasonable <laughs> i think <laughs> bargain basement price when you tell somebody that though right what, yeah like when for like software we don't we don't blink an eye spending a hundred bucks or like yeah or buying buying two games hundred bucks right mm-hmm. $50 game here $30 game there $60 <laughs> game here <laughs> But when it comes to something outside of games, people just go, ah, well, I mean, sometimes you got to pay a couple of bucks for software. People got to eat. Yeah. What I use <laughs> to ship in the studio is DaVinci Resolve. If you've ever looked to install DaVinci Resolve on Ubuntu or Debian, you've probably run across one of my videos with the other 30,000 people who've seen them. There's a new beta. We talked about it not last week, but week before last. Yeah. 18.0 beta 2 is out. I'm not going to go over a ton of stuff in this, but there is one big honking feature I've been waiting on for a <laughs> long time. It has always been a curiosity of like, why is, why can I do this? Uh, you know, gang of other features, but you can now export video and audio from the delivery page in Legasp, Clutch Your Pearls, MP3. Woohoo! Very excited about that because yeah. up until now I had to drag everything out, export everything as wave, bring okay, it back into audacity, it. right? Then uh, make the MP3 and okay, <laughs> yeah. There's gangs of other features in here, and but I just wanted to give this here it is right there, MP3 audio and yay! Oh, very. <laughs> this exciting. is going to be the first podcast that I've exported directly from. Like, oh, that's exciting, yeah, man. It's going to save me like <laughs> seven minutes of like having to wait and then just doop, doop, send it out. Now, let's talk about some of the bad things. There's still no option to import AAC audio mm. on Linux. Mm. I don't even know if it's in Windows or Mac, but that is always confusing. Why is that a problem? If you record something with your phone or yeah, like, camera. Uh, camcorder, yeah. yeah, like that, it's going to be AAC. And uh, that, which means that you got to take that video, drag it into Audacity or whatever you're going to use, then yeah, export and that it. out, right? Yeah. Which is, it's silly, is what it is. But uh, that's still a problem. And there's still no support for VST plugins in Linux mm. and Resolve. I don't know why. Maybe they'll get around to it. Maybe not. It's not a game. It would. It really wouldn't save me a lot of time now because I've spent so much time setting up a system to get around having to do any post audio. You know, we do all of our 99% of our audio processing live and I got a video coming out about that. Stay tuned. Um, Mm. But yeah, uh, there it is. It's a silly thing to get excited about, but man, that made my day. I was moderately pleased. Yeah, for an it also helped you field all those questions and feedback we've gotten over the years about how do you do this if it doesn't support MP3? Exactly. How do you bring it in? <laughs> Here's the thing, Jill. Katie and Live, at least. Yeah, does MP3 support? At least. Yeah. <laughs> but if you drag something into Katie and Live that it doesn't understand, it lets you know. Yeah. It's it like, does. I, don't, I don't know what's going on. DaVinci Resolve doesn't do anything you could drag yeah it just sits there <laughs> you can drag ham into the venture resolve and it won't just look at you sideways like i don't know what that is it will give you a warning it will give you a pop-up notification it's like you sh- rtfm you didn't rtfm and uh <laughs> that is always fun recently i think maybe last week somebody had brought that up in the davinci resolve support forums mm-hmm. genuinely what they were replied with <laughs> that's in technical documentation page one. like okay fine but you know, a little pop up. 
That'd be nice. Just let new users know about things like that. You know, a little bit of feedback. But yeah, there you go. There you mm-hmm. go. Um, quick shout out. This show is brought to you by you. That's right. Woo-hoo. We got a patron. Patreon.com forward slash like schemecast. Get access to our super secret discord where we hang out in the other six days a week. It's always fun when somebody finally pops into our discord. Like, Whoa. Oh, hello, my people. And you know, we get a new person. <laughs> I'm like, ah, now we have our clutches. But you can also join our discord if you subscribe to us on Twitch, you got some Bezo bucks. You might not know it, but you get Amazon Prime. Twitch or not. You can become a Twitch or not. (laughs) And you can play Trackmania with us. But (laughs) if you do back us on Patreon, I brought up the pre-pre-super shows and the uncut. That's a little bonus extra podcast we have. If you missed the live show and you want it in audio format, or if you want to rewatch the video full with no edits, we'll make that available for you. Plus some early snack picks. The one I'm talking about, the audio, how I get the audio from... Jill's PC mm-hmm. over to a DAW, then Ooh. over to an OBS PC in real time while it's getting processed and streamed and recorded. I'm covering that. I pretty much have to, like, I got the video done. I just got to lay out my disc track and uh, cool. stick that together. And I'm going to put that up for patrons a little bit early because, you know, I'm like, hey, here's a sneak peek. What I'm really saying is, like, find any typos I made. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did it, did Spell check. Like, yeah. Or like it's, it's grammar check. Hundred percent. You have complete freedom to well actual me. Hundred percent. Because I usually put the it's about a week early, let everybody get a good look yeah. at them. But <laughs> hey, thanks to each and every one of you. Stick around your names in the credits. That's how we do this. It's a value for value, as they say on the internet. But mm-hmm. let's get a slice of pie. This yeah. Week, uh, what are we talking? What did about? you find this week, Ben? What picture? Nothing. <laughs> oh, okay. Dude, That's I okay. looked. I wanted. <laughs> you would think, right? You would think yeah. a camera pie. Yeah, I was gonna like say a, a picture pie. pie. A, yeah, or a lens on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Google told me to go pound Yahoo. Uh, you can find cakes that are camera shaped, but not pies. Not pie. Not a thing. I was just like. What? I, I didn't know where to go after that, but this is our slice of pie segment. Uh, this is a megapixel. Is it just one megapixel now? <laughs> no, uh, 64 megapixels to be precise. That's a lot of megapixels. <laughs> yeah. This is Raspberry Pi's new 64 megapixel camera. And yeah, this is honestly really, really <laughs> exciting. Uh We've never had this high resolution uh, camera for the Raspberry Pi, and at this price, the pre-order—it's only uh, it's forty percent off right now at thirty-five dollars and ninety-nine cents. Wow, that's <laughs> that's an incredible for a, a smartphone quality camera. <laughs> it, it and the pictures look really good. I was really impressed by the pictures, and I watched some of the videos. Very impressive. Yeah, they, and let's go down to like, whoa, all right, not safe for tw- Come on, guys, don't <laughs> put that in the carousel. Uh, <laughs> ah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that looks completely serviceable. Yeah, and it's got autofocus and digital zoom. Uh, very cool. Low light, all right. Yeah, yeah, it takes good dark photos, and that's that's a new new feature for the uh, Raspberry Pi Pi phone uh, cameras have uh, just, I'm I'm sorry, the Raspberry Pi cameras have not been good with low light. Now, yeah, these little ones have not. Now we do need to put an asterisk on that and say like, because I have some of the uh, high quality Pi HQs with the interchangeable lenses. Those are better, but yeah, yeah, one that's just on a single board like this, I think this looks really good. I mean, it can do, um, Pretty high resolution video too. Did they put those stats in there? Yeah, Here we they go. Did. Here we go. Video mode. At the very bottom. <laughs> uh, 1920 by 1080. It's 60. Uh, oh, if you wanted to get fancy, you can do 4624 by 3472 at 10. Oh, even better. 9152 at 6944 at 2.7. None of that. Woo-hoo. None of that peasant 2.0. Uh-uh. 2.7. Now how much would you pay? What does it work with? 
Pi 2, 3, CM3, 0W, 0W2, which I own. It's in a box that I've never used, and I want to do a video on it. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. At this price, I might just pick one up. I don't know. Yeah, do you- play with it, definitely. And I like how you can, uh, you know, order the, the 3D printed uh, camera shells for it. That's, yeah. that's really cool. And there's right. a lot of really neat ones. Uh, I got I went one. To, yeah. <laughs> uh, like a plexiglass cutout for the Pi Zero W that turns that into like a camera case. With uh, I, I eventually got to get around to making one, but I don't know if the world is ready for Venhands hands mm. and high def. Yeah, <laughs> might be might be too Aww. high. Might be too no. much. No. Oh, yeah, and I, I like the name of this camera. It's the sixty-four megapixel Pi Hawk Eye Camera from Arducam. They're cool. the original Pi. Camera manufacturers, yeah. yeah. They sure are. <laughs> huh. Yeah, there's a there's a nice little case right there. Yeah, I, I like mean, that. That's all retro. See, yeah, if you see somebody <laughs> out and about and you see the USB three holes and Ethernet on the side, you can walk up to them and be like, hey, my people, what's up? And you're going to be able to <laughs> conversation. Both of you are going to enjoy it. So, yeah, that's pretty dope. Mm-hmm. I like that. That makes me happy. Sweet. Now. <laughs> One last little bit. Uh, we do have a contact form. If you want to get have your message read on this very sh- not this very show, next week's show possibly. I don't, yeah. I don't do time travel. <laughs> that's bad. Yes. <laughs> Star Trek has taught us multiple things about don't do that. Uh, that's how you end up with like section 13. But if you want to get in contact with us, say something mm-hmm. we might read on the show, head over to our contact form, leave a YouTube comment or uh, comment on the Patreon post and we will get back to it. If you just got questions or something like that, it's not you know, like, like, please do not read this on the show. We won't read it on the show. Probably. Mm-hmm. Now, last week, Jordan and I were talking. Uh, this is like double fun for me because Jordan used to work with Fedora. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we were just talking, just in the middle of the conversation. And, you know, Fedora had said, yo, you know, we're going to be nuking X11 and all that. And I think we kind of breezed over it, but we were not very clear about this. And this is a fair point from Professor Linux. Fedora is not removing X11. This is cool. This is real. He writes, uh, in your recent episode, you claim that Fedora is removing X11 and going Wayland only. This is not the case. They're only removing X11 drivers for legacy hardware that doesn't have 3D acceleration. Anyway, you, sir, Mm. or ma'am, are correct. Fedora 37 will remove XORG drivers for both the mm-hmm. uh, frame buffer dev and the generic Visa driver. That's what's going away, which is understandable, which means you're not going to be able to see a Tux logo when you boot, Jill. Yeah. Oh. I mean, unless Aww. you have a video card made in the last 30 years. But Yeah, I know. <laughs> we haven't seen that in a long time. <laughs> you're just going to have to <laughs> let that Hercules graphics adapter. <laughs> just let it go, man. Yeah. Or, or my Matrox Millennium. <laughs> You know what? I bet those probably have some type of a uh, workable driver. They might not. Yes. Who knows? But Matrox does. <laughs> oh, I know they have Linux drivers. I just don't know yeah. current there. Oh, current. Yeah. yeah it's been They've a been long updated. time yeah. since I've messed with that. Uh, now, eventually, Xorg itself is going to mm. end up getting removed. Just 10 years from now. Uh, yes. <laughs> save me on that. That's a joke, everyone. Uh, you know, uh, you know, various <laughs> desktops that Fedora offers are going to shift over to Wayland, except XFCE. Yeah, XFCE and my beloved Window Maker. <laughs> oh, we won't run in Wayland like, yet. <laughs> um, Wayland does seem like the future. A lot of people, uh, if you have Intel integrated AMD, they're having a good time with it for the most part. And I, it's been astonishing for the stuff that I follow, like uh, OBS, the support, like that's pretty much up and running these days and it's very much active development. And I do think, mm-hmm. um, you know, eventually everything's going to go over to it. You know, Gnome's there, Katie's yeah, there. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah. I mean, if you go to XFC and like look on the roadmap, it says whale and it's like, ha, 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 ha. That don't, not really, but <laughs> close enough. I, I'm fine with X. Maybe that's yeah, just me being me old. I'm at the point where new and exciting is only good when it's uh, stable and yeah. tested. <laughs> I don't, I am scared of new and exciting these days. I mean, I like to play with it, just not on my stuff. I'd be happy to come over to your house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's yeah. get the new and exciting over here and on. 
come back here with my nice boring Debian system where everything Aww. just works. Um, yeah. Debian love. <laughs> I love Debian and all of the body kit distributions. You know, the yes. put, put the blinky lights and the spoilers on Debian. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Waylon, I love that spiral. <laughs> right? Yeah. right? <laughs> NVIDIA's got to get their game together. Uh, NVIDIA's slowly, very slowly, I'm not even going to say surely, but is slowly trying yeah, to say, yeah, okay. Wayland happy. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. they, they've been sitting with their arms crossed in the pouty position going, you should have done it our way. Yeah. Everyone yeah. else is like, no, we're going to do it like this. And just begrudgingly. I don't know. It would be interesting to see. This is. Yeah. The future is going to be very, very exciting. I, you know, I, I know they'll come up with a way to, to make my wonderful X window managers compatible with Wayland. And, uh, that, that'll happen, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll gotta... be able to use IceWM and, and open box and, after step i mean on your retro linux system maybe yeah <laughs> here's something i want you to think about though I, I i want to see how nvidia reacts when amd rolls out the arc series gpus mm. because i have a gut feeling uh we were talking about it on saturday show go back and watch that i'm gonna even break it back up again this week there's a yeah. lot of movement for HEVC 265 support and OBS getting yes. added. And I can't figure out yeah. who's behind that because it really seems that, you know, there's already rumors that the new AMD cards are going to have AV1 encode. Uh huh. And, and, and Intel's already like, yeah, we're going to have AV1 encode. Mm-hmm. What's Come on, Nvidia Intel. Gonna, what's we Nvidia want that right now. Do? All right. <laughs> NVIDIA's going to have to start playing ball all of a sudden. And it's going to be like watching Intel having to relearn how to play ball all of a sudden. Yeah. When, you know, when Ryzen came out and Epic <laughs> came out and Intel was like, what? no, 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 no. We were supposed to be able to overcharge and under deliver. This is, we're Intel. This is how we do things. And they, mm-hmm. you know, wanted to take like five years for them to start. And we're just seeing like price performance competitive products coming yeah. out of Intel again. No. Who knows? Maybe in NVIDIA will be a quicker ship to turn around and we'll, we'll start to see it a little more cooperation. Cooperation in the open source world. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? No matter what you do, NVIDIA, I'm not taking down my poster. So. Yeah. <laughs> Very true, Ben. <laughs> Linus said it correctly. <laughs> yeah. He, he said, I love you, NVIDIA. <laughs> All right, everyone. We're running a bit long. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again <laughs> next week. How about Love some you credits? All. Do I got things queued up? Maybe I do. Let's find out. Ooh, let's see if the credits are queued up. Well, we have lots of people watching in chat. We got Linux stuff. We got PT Dav Dave 20. Wow, we've had a lot of people in. Of course, there's Artharon. We've got Gamatron. We got Alex from System76. We have DeKresny. We have Beastwick. We have my Steve husband, of course. And so many more. And we have so many wonderful patrons to thank, but we can't thank them all. <laughs> the I want NVIDIA to show. be, NVIDIA needs to be number two, possibly number three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at all those beautiful people on our credits. Gang of people. <laughs> if you haven't done it, hop into Discord. That's where we hang out the rest yeah. of the week. I'll be in there. She'll be. Absolutely. In there. <laughs> we'll be having, we'll having NeoFetch trains. Those yes. <laughs> Those, that's always fun. <laughs> they get weird sometimes. <laughs> See you next week, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>